Yo, what is up, you guys? It's your boy, Big Dog One Two One. Today we're back again with some more Never Winter, and uh, we actually have a updated build. So, uh, yeah, let's jump right into it. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. It doesn't cost anything, and it helps me out immensely. Immensely, not immensely. All right, but anyway. Let's uh let's start off with powers. So obviously I'm a ranger, I'm a warden. Uh for the record guys, I do not like being like everyone else. So my ranger warden build is not pure melee or pure whatever everyone else is doing. I like to be different. It may not do like the it may be the best, it may not be the best. I haven't truly had time to test it against other, uh, I guess, warden builds. But uh, this is a build that I enjoy and what I like doing. Uh, you don't have to necessarily use this build. You don't necessarily have to do anything with it. This is just for reference for you guys, I guess. But yeah, let's jump right into it. So for my RT, or right trigger, I use Penetrating Arrow and Storm Strike. For my LT, I use Electric Shot. For my Encounter Powers, I use Hindering Shot and Hindering Strike. Constricting Arrow and Steel Breeze. And Fox's Cunning and Fox Shift. I know you guys are probably like, whoa, 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 whoa. Who still uses Fox's Cunning and Fox's Shift? Fox Shift. Believe me, guys, it works. Uh, this is essentially a build. I don't know if some of you guys have been around since I started doing Everwinter builds or started playing Everwinter. Fox's Cunning and Fox Shift was like one of the main important encounter powers to use just because Fox's Cunning allowed you to basically with the precise timing of the fox you and the nearby allies dodge the next incoming attack within eight seconds which is very good when when you're wah, whenever you're facing a bunch of opponents or a bunch or a boss fight because you can essentially give your team you and your teammates a free dodge and then fox is cunning fox shift sorry allows you to dash the nearby enemies slowing them while increasing your own speed it also does a decent amount of damage but yeah believe me it works but uh, for the dailies i use snipe and call the storm call the storm is your main daily that you're going to be using you can use snipe or really anything else that you want to use or that you enjoy but you definitely need call the storm uh, for my class features, I use Aspect of the Serpent, Blade Storm, and Twin Blade Storm. Uh, if you're not capped out with combat advantage, which I'm not, I usually switch these out every now and then. You can pick whichever one you want, but the four main or five main that I would use are Blade Storm, Twin Blade Storm, Aspect of the Serpent, or Aspect Aspect of the Pack, or Aspect of the Lone Wolf. And in situations, you can even use Seeker's Vengeance whenever you feel like you're behind the boss all the time. For my feats, I use Death Strike. Your melee encounter powers cause your next range encounter powers to deal 10% more damage. Your ranged encounter powers cause your next melee encounter power to deal 10% more damage. Storm's Recovery. Using a ranged encounter power reduces your other range encounter cooldowns by 3 seconds. Using a melee counter power reduces your other melee encounter cooldowns by three seconds. So, a bunch of people are probably going to be asking, why are you using Storm Recovery over Swiftness of the Fox, or why is Storm's Recovery better? Storm's Recovery is better just because the because I like to switch stances so many times as I do each encounter power. The other cooldowns in whatever stance that I'm in are decreased. So I recover my powers faster using Storm's Recovery 
than I would if I had Swiftness of the Fox. And then next up, Blade Hurricane, which just about every, probably every Hunter Ranger has this stat. Uh, Skirmisher's Gambit and Enhanced Conductivity. For my boons, I have five into recruit training, five into critical strike, five into cultist bulwark, five into squires training, five into armor pin, five into demonic bulwark, two into marathon runner as of right now. Knights training, I have five. Combat advantage, I have five. And, and dino bulwark, I have one. Captain's training. Necrotic Bulwark, I have three in Second Wind, three in Call of Power, and I have two in the Deathly Rage, which I need one more, I need to spend one more boom point so I can get the third rank. For my guild, I use the Power Bonus, the Hit Point Bonus, and Utility, I should be using the Mount Speed, because I'm, I'm not ranking up anymore. And PvP, I guess if you do PvP, you can choose whatever one is best. I don't precisely know. Uh, let's jump into my stats. So I'm focused more in con in strength and dex. Uh, if you want, you can also go into charisma. Charisma increases your companion influence and recharge speed. I didn't feel the need to increase my companion influence because I feel like my companion influence is pretty high as it is also augments yeah uh, I went into dexterity provides me more critical severity and movement speed and strength provides me with uh, stamina regeneration and physical damage boost these are my stats as of right now guys as of right now hope you all know that yes you want to max out your stats and right now I am nowhere near maxing out my stats this is just a in game somewhat build that you can use or that you feel the need that whatever if you enjoy this build whatever uh, right now I have hat of the cowardly glistening skills crash guards the eye piercer. I have one piece of the alabaster blades. Well, alabaster set. Uh, I have the gators of the spy guilds. I'm using the prize raid trousers of the cult. Prize assault shirt of the cult. Demogorgon's girdle of might. A ra raid ring of spy. Pristine ring of the guard. And Baphomet's frontal talisman. And right now, in all my utility slots, I'm running Dark Enchantments. In all my offensive slots, I'm running Radiant Enchantments. And in all my defense, I'm using Azurus. With the one offensive slot, I have a Tenebrous Enchantment in. When striking a foe, you have an 8% chance to deal 8% of your current hit points in necrotic damage up to a maximum of 24,000. Additional Tenebrous enchantments increase the chance of the highest rank enchant to activate, but not increase the damage done. So, initially, I didn't see the need to put more than one just because it doesn't increase or doesn't stack the damage. So, uh, my artifacts, I'm using the Cancer of Atropel, Shard of the Orcus Wand, Lantern Revelation, which I need to change out, but I have yet to figure out what exactly I want to change it out with. Because I do like the fact that it gives me critical strike and combat advantage and armor pin. Uh, and I have Troy Brand's, Troy Brand's ring. Uh, let's jump into my companions, which obviously just about everybody has a bully pup. You don't have to use the bully pup. You can use a different augment pet, but just know augment pets are best in the slot at the moment. I have my bonding rune stones. And in my I have Pearl the Ring Companion. And in the in the offense slot, I have an Arcane and Recondite. 
I have a choke chain with the companion. In the offense slot, I have arcane and enigmatic. And I have plated belt with the companion. I have arcane and recondite. And for my companion bonuses, as of right now, I have the baby decrows present, which gives me 6,000 power. Minstrel's discipline, which gives me 1,000 power and awareness. Kinku Archer's Wisdom, 1,000 power and armor pin. Stardorf, Stardorf's Presence, 4,000 combat advantage. And Mercenary's Discipline, 1,000 power and 500 combat advantage. And uh, these these guys are, I think everyone's green except uh, my Baby D Crow, which is in purple. So uh, these stats will be a lot higher once I get them to legendary so don't look at these stats as like oh my goodness this is so low no they're just at green right now and I just don't have enough companion tokens to upgrade them all so I'm doing them one by one but uh, next up we're gonna go into my mount powers I have assassins covenant combatants maneuver another combatant's maneuver because they stack but it'll just be less of a percentage that they stack but it, as they stack the second I guess second combatant's maneuver will be less as effective as the first so say for instance one is 30% then the next one will contribute 15% essentially uh, next up I have Barbarian's Revelry and Gladiator's Gal and yeah, I believe that's about it. I think I ran through just about everything, guys. That was just a quick little summary. If you have any questions, if you want to see something different, if you want to see a different type of build, or if you even want to try and let me know about a different build, please don't forget. Please comment down below. And yeah. Uh, let's run through like a quick little, I guess, cycle. So what I usually do is find his cunning. I usually shoot him. And I usually just go in and hit my spam L2 or LT, whichever console that you're on. And by the time, everything else should be cooled down. And you can basically just start, over the, ro start the rotation all over again. And don't forget to implement your artifact and uh, what is that power called? And call the storm. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't be afraid to let me know. If you guys want to see the melee build that everyone else is using, please let me know down in the comments. I'm not a big fan of it because I really don't like staying in one stance the entire time. But hey, if you guys want to see it, I will definitely show you show it to y'all. And uh, if you have any other any further questions, please don't be afraid to let me know. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed the video. Peace.